Um, I just want to say hello. Um, thank you for your time. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Um, my name is Maria Kessler, and I'm from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Um, let's see, are you not seeing my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. You can put it full screen to see like... Yes, you can see okay. That's perfect. So um, I just want to say thank you for your time today. Um, let's go ahead and get started since I'm having some te technical difficulties in the beginning. So I want to start first with the Met's mission. Our mission is to collect, study, conserve, and present significant works of art across all times and cultures. Um, it's to connect people to creativity, knowledge, and ideas. And that connection to creativity, knowledge, and ideas is really at the very heart of my API presentation here today. Now, before we get totally started, I know that many of you have heard about the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and I hope that many have been able to visit, but I wanna share just a few things that make the Met special to me. First of all, we're located in New York City's Center Park. We have gorgeous architectural features throughout the building. We have numerous galleries. Here's the Temple of Dendur and also the Greek and Roman sculpture court. And we've been dedicated to education from our very beginning. So you have a then and a now image showing here. But at the very heart, of the Metropolitan Museum is our encyclopedic collection, which spans over 5,000 years of art and culture from across the globe. So an encyclopedic collection really just means we have a huge range of objects in our collection. So it starts with, you know, um, Greek and Roman statues, vessels of classical mythology. We have many representations of Buddha and Buddhist deities. We have furniture, we have period rooms, we have many depictions of animals, we have still life, we have satire. We have petrified bread and we have mummies from ancient Egypt. We also have artifacts of historical events and depictions of historical events. And of course, we have the human figure depicted in all matter of materials. So we have over 1.5 million art objects in our collection. And if you are to visit, only 4% of that collection is viewable in our galleries. We have nearly half a million art objects online with 670,000 associated images. But if we're to fulfill our mission to connect people to creativity, knowledge, and ideas, if we're gonna be a museum of the world, about the world, and for the world, we need to make our collection more accessible. We want our collection to be as accessible as possible to the 4.3 billion internet connected people on the planet. And really to do that, we needed to put together our open access program and an API so that we had accessibility as well as reach. So our open access program is really uh, the release of public domain images and data under CC0 license. And the CC0 license is really a notice waiving all of our copyright claims to these works. So we, we created our open access program and launched it in early 2017. And with that, we had about 375,000 art objects. And this is a great start. It was a huge mass of content and it was available at metmuseum.org or in a CSV file, but it wasn't that accessible. You had to go to our website and download one image or one file at a time, or you could use our CSV file, which is great. That's a great first start. But if we were gonna work with partnerships and platforms, we really knew that an API was our solution. So in 2018, we started to build our API. We knew what we wanted to launch with, and we knew the general sense of the architecture that we needed, but we had an opportunity to work with Google Arts and Culture, and they provided us with a real world use case. So Google Arts and Culture um, is a platform for museum collections all over the world. And we had been working with them for over seven years but we had only managed to upload about 700 images. 
So it was in both of our best interests to work with them. So we put together the basic schema to upload our open access collection onto, our, onto their platform using our API. So when we launched our API, they launched the integration of our API and they went from 700 images to over 200,000 images in one night. So the launch of our API was in late 2018 and we launched with over 205,000 distinct art objects with over 406,000 associated images. Some images actually have numerous, um, some art objects have numerous images with them. We also were certain to make um, all of our uh, data files available, both under CC0, our public domain works, as well as our copyrighted works. For, it, for us, this was a really pivotal, pivotal moment because we now had a mass of content and we had the pipeline, we had the means to work with other partnerships and platforms to reach those global audiences um, because we had the API and we knew that we had a successful integration in working with Google Arts and Culture. We thought we would let the dust settle for just a moment. We also had in the background a subject keyword data set that we were working on, and we wanted to upload that to the API. We also had a few partners that we wanted to integrate the API with. We were just gonna take our time, but that didn't really happen because just a few weeks later, Microsoft approached us with the opportunity to experiment with artificial intelligence. So we thought this was a great idea. Let's explore uh, with AI the data sets that we already had, and let's put in that subject keyword data set and see what would happen. So we were game for that. And uh, we also had the opportunity to ask some partners at MIT to join us, because why not add in a few great academic minds just to keep us honest? So the goal of this collaboration was to use AI, our API, and this new subject keyword data set, and to make new connections, to see what new connections could be made for global audiences, connecting them to art. So after a two-day hackathon, and then a few weeks of prototype work, we actually had a reveal event at the Met. And what you're seeing here are some of the prototypes that we revealed. The two images on the left are from Gen Studio. Gen Studio is a generative adversarial network project that took two pieces of art from different times and different geographies and let the computers interpolate what might have been in between using common attributes. So that was just fascinating. On the right, you see an application called Storyteller App where a person would talk into a microphone and then uh, artworks were generated up on the screen in one of 10 languages. A few more uh, prototypes. We had a My Met story, which was based on immigrant, um, sorry, Instagram images that were paired with a Met image. Or below that is um, artwork of the day, which used open source historical data and then paired that with a Met image as well. On the right, what you're seeing is a Wikipedia depiction, art depiction game. So we asked a Wikipedian to also join us in this collaborative mix, and they generated um, subject keywords. And then the Wikipedian said, ah, oh, subject keywords are you know, only X percent uh, valid. So let's crowdsource uh, the Wikipedian uh, community and verify those uh, keywords. So for us, this was great because we got clear validation in a simple yes or no, and we got to bring those subject keywords back into the Mac collection. For us, this was a great opportunity. First of all, we had researchers, data scientists, Wikipedians, Met staff, um, everyone was involved and we were creating all this range of prototypes and that would connect people to art in different ways. So that was absolutely fantastic. We were very pleased with this collaboration. Um, we were even luckier when not too much longer later, 
another group from Microsoft also uh, approached us and they said, hey, we have an idea. We'd like to use AI to explore your uh, collection um, uh, regarding search. And we worked with them and collaborated on a search proof of concept called Art Explorer. And what this did is it used cognitive as well as visual search to explore the API and, and the open access images in the collection. So you can start with Washington crossing the Delaware and within one or two clicks, you could get to a statue of Minnehaha created by the sculptress Edmonia Lewis, who is one of the very first women of international claim. And she was also of African-American and Native American descent. So for us to go from Washington to Edmonia Lewis was just astounding. And uh, we really love this concept and we'd like to see more done with it. Um, also, as part of this, it did spawn a Bing visual search skill, which is available and used today by developers. So shifting gears just a little bit, um, another use of our API was with Pinterest, and this was more about a process. Um, similar to Google Arts and Culture, uh, Pinterest is a creative community. It's a different type of community, but we had been uploading images uh, five a week, you know, 20 a month, something like that. But using our API and working with Pinterest, we were able to develop a process that lets us batch upload to their site. So we could do batches of 100 to 1,000. And when we did our first upload last summer, we uploaded about 2,000 images in one shot. And we were super, super excited because of course it generated a ton of traffic to the pins and it brought referral traffic back to the Met. So we've done a few more uploads and we have this process in play now. And so it's just another example of how to use the API as a process. So we do collaborate with uh, academics and universities, et cetera, that is at the core of our mission. And, um, you know, it, it's been interesting because in the past, it's mostly been art history. And all of a sudden, we are working with university students in big data and technology. So last fall, we worked with a group from Parsons School of Design in their data visualization class. And they approached us. We said, yes, use our API. Yes, we're happy to collaborate. So we met with them and we told them a few of the quirks about our data. And then we met with them during the midterms and then the finals. And we were so delighted with what we saw from these students. Um, here you're seeing a representation of armor and weaponry across time and geography. But also um, one of the students did a landscape generator that was fascinating that looked at all the landscape paintings across the Mets collection, which was enormous. And then we also had a student that was particularly interested in religious art and tying religious art back to the specific stories of the Catholic Rosary. Again, this was a real opportunity for us in many ways. First of all, we got first-hand feedback from the students. A couple of the students uh, wanted to use uh, depictions of female artists or to look into uh, female artists. We didn't have that information in our API. So what we did is we've, we've since added it and we now have um, a way to sort the information so that you could uh, select um, the where, where gender is uh, distinguished as an artist identified as female. And so you can actually sort on that particular data. But it's that feedback that we got from the students that was so important. Look, when we launched our API, we made it public. There was no barrier, no key. Um, and we did this on purpose because we wanted people to experiment with our open access collection. We wanted people to connect uh, to knowledge, creativity, and ideas. That was, that's part of our mission. Um, so, you know, this was a great collaboration for us. 
We also worked with um, or, you know, a couple of groups in the data science community as well. Um, we worked with the University of Virginia. Um, they, their data science institute, and they built an AI image detection model that was fascinating. And then we also worked with a group from Visipedia and um, some colleagues at New York Cornell, and they arranged a Kaggle competition that looked that used machine learning, looking at fine grain attributes in an artwork and whether or not you could predict when that artwork was created and where it was from. Um, so that's actually on TensorFlow and very fascinating uh, competition. And it just showed you um, the, the data sciences, scientists were absolutely excited to be working with the Met Collection instead of uh, scientific uh, cells and widgets, et cetera. Um, again, these were all different uh, types of projects, but every time we collaborated with these different groups, they gave us incredible feedback. And because of their feedback, we've enhanced our API in different ways. Um, really in the past couple of months, we listened to all the feedback we were getting and we realized we needed to add in a few controlled vocabularies. So we just recently added Getty Research Institute's union list of artist names, as well as the art and architecture thesaurus. We've also added Wikidata IDs. Now, these are incredibly important um, things to add to our API because it allows our collection to be intermingled with other collections that also have these controlled vocabularies. Also, the Wikidata IDs open us up to one of the largest shared platforms in the planet as well. And uh, it's machine accessible through the Wikidata IDs as well as translatable into over 80 active languages. So here's another example of an organization that approached us right after we launched our API. They came to us and they asked for just the information that was in our Egyptian curatorial department. And we didn't have that at the start, but we thought, oh, well, if they need it, someone else might need it. And so we now have an endpoint by department as well. And as you can see, we're now part of one of four different uh, collections that are on the Clio site so that researchers and students can you know, access this information as a one-stop shop. We also have an integration of our API with Creative Commons. Their main mission is to make all public domain images as accessible as possible. And of course, we're in total alignment with that. So we like API integrations like this one. And then I just wanted to review our API. It's at metmuseum.github.io. And we have lots of different ways that you can sort this information and filter it and use different endpoints. Um, here are just a few. Um, and I just want to say again how important the partnership feedback, the public feedback has been and how we're absolutely enhancing our API as we're going. We really do believe that we have a unique API in our field. Um, it's because we, we have an engaged team that is listening, that is collaborating, that is enhancing this from, uh, on a periodic basis but also our information is updated on a nightly basis as well. So here we are at the Met again, and I can really seriously tell you that we could not have imagined all these different projects and programs and um, interactions that would have been possible under our open access program, but we were absolutely certain that an API was the pipeline to that accessibility, that an API was the launch pad for this. And it certainly has, has been. It's been a wild, wonderful ride with all these different projects. Um, so we're very, very pleased. Um, I also want to say I'm honored to be part of API Days. And I'm honored to share the Met API story with you. And I truly hope that some of the ideas shared here will connect us to knowledge, creativity, and ideas for centuries to come. 
Thank you very much, uh, Maria. Thank you. Uh, some uh, we have a little bit of time for uh, one or two questions. Uh, one question we've seen is about um, what's what's the original team? Is it a team of technical people who learn who has been hired and and who learn about museums and and you know collaboration uh, to build that program, or or it was the opposite? Like it was people who know new art, who knew like uh, uh, you know collections that were able to uh, who learn about APIs and to to uh, to manage this uh, open access program. So we're very fortunate because we have um, developers. Our lead developer on this actually has worked in the museum environment for a while. So it, it's a little bit of both. Um, he's a developer. He understands and he used architecture that was, you know, um, sustainable for our API. We use a RESTful. I, I'm not a technology, but we use the RESTful um, program. And then um, he also understands our data and understands the intricacies and the, the things that are um, different about the little quirks about our data as well. Yeah, so it was important because uh, Mari Papandiek showed us that the people aspect is extremely important, in, even into a, let's say, a technical, technological program. Uh, so yeah, so this is why I wanted also uh, uh, to, to put a question. Uh, so what, what's your next project? What are you working on and where the community can help you today? So um, one of the things that I'm interested in, of course, we want more. Um, we do have a few more enhancements that we want to add to our API. Uh, one of the feedbacks that we had was, you know, can we get, get gallery numbers? Because we have maps, we have uh, different areas that have different er um, art collections. So we'll probably add the gallery maps and a few other items that have been asked for. But we're looking for partnerships, um, you know, that will expand us in other areas, maybe an integration with um, art agencies or advertising agencies, maybe something that's actually aligned with our um, mission, open education resources, education's primary, um, just showing that search that Microsoft helped prototype with us, that would be extraordinary to get into schools, especially in this period of time, or to collaborate with other collections. Yeah, great. We have one last question for Regina Jaslow. Uh, is the Met able to connect the dots as how having the CPI may have helped increase awareness of the Met and maybe enhance donation or funding, right? Do you are, are you able to link that yet or not yet? No, we, we haven't been able to link that. Um, I, I will say um, we don't know who's using our API because it is public. We didn't build in authentication for that. However, um, we love it when people contact us and tell us they're using it. So you should contact us. Um, we, you know, we're a public institution. Um, of course, we want partnerships. Of course, we want people to, you know, donate money to us. That's great. But we're interested in making sure that we are meeting our mission of making our, um, our, our collection accessible. And just for the uh, the story, but one time I was uh, talking to the head of the Louvre Museum, you know, the French museum, and he told me why everybody see Mona Lisa, w comes to Paris to see Mona Lisa, because they are, they have already seen it somewhere in a book or in Google image mm -hmm. and stuff. So it seems you are doing the exact the exact you are doing this philosophy for the Met, and by the more you share about the Met picture, the more people will come to see the original art, right? Yes. There's no question. How can you not fall in love with some of these items? We truly believe that we have a, something in our collection that will connect with every person on the planet that will inspire them. We truly believe that. So there's there's truly something for everyone and the more access they get, the better. I agree with you. I agree with you. And this is why we love to to have you to, to tell the story about that. Uh, Thank you. 